Let's talk about how we manage our Fabric Data Warehouse using dynamic management views next on Tales from the Field. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content by the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesdays, we have our MS Tech Bits. That's where we have a video based off something we've learned during the week, something that inspired us. We found a documentation working with a product group or a customer. You're watching one of those right now. Let's get over that great content. So I came across this documentation the other day, monitoring connections, sessions, and requests using DMVs. And I thought, well, this is a really interesting thing for us to have in Fabric. Scrolled down a little bit and I started looking at what we've got to deal with. And under how to monitor connections, sessions, and requests using query lifecycle DMVs, what I found was that we had some DMVs used a lot in SQL Server, SysDM exec requests, SysDM exec sessions. Those are two that if you've ever been a DBA, you know these very, very well. Now, further down in the article, it talks about killing a query. We will talk about that, but I don't want to jump there right away. That's kind of drastic, and we want to save that for only in those situations where we absolutely don't have any other choice. Instead of talking about this, let me show you some of this. So I'm over in SSMS and I'm already connected to my Fabric Data Warehouse and I'm going to use the college database. This is a database that I've used before that I've created uh, previously in some other content, grades, courses, enrollment, students, tables. Uh, to be quite honest, I created this in my SQL Manage instance. I used a data pipeline to import it into my Fabric workspace. This is available over on my blog, SQL Balls, but I'm also going to make sure that the Create College script is in my GitHub as well. The first query we're going to look at is SysDM exec request. This is a very important query because it lets us see every query that is currently executing against the data warehouse. When we execute this, you'll see that we've got a lot of information that comes back, a lot of great information, different columns. Uh, but if you know, we're at 139 on our SSMS query window, that's the session ID. So if I scroll down, one of the things we can find is 139 and we can find out information specifically about our query. It's a select, uh, we've got a, a plan. Um, we can see what our previous wait stat was. We can see any CPU time, memory, all kinds of good stuff. In and of itself, we're going to need to combine this with some other ones. So we're going to go next is SysDM exec sessions. This DMV is tells us every session that is currently connected to our warehouse. Again, 139. Let's scroll back down and let's find our session information. So we go down to 139. Let's see if we can find session 139. And I can see the program name, the host ID, information about the user. It's running. You'll notice some of those others were sleeping. I can find other information about this session as well. So if a query is sleeping, it's not executing. There's a connection there and it's connected, but it's sleeping. It's not running. When we are running, we're in the executable frame. So it's important for us to keep that in mind. And then there's SysDM exec connections. Uh, another DMV that was highlighted in the article. I'm not going to use this a lot going forward, but it had some interesting information about our connection. Um, you might be able to derive some value of this, but very interesting stuff. But we're going to stick with SysDM exec request and sessions. So sessions has a really cool cool field is user process. Now, typically in SQL Server, this makes sure that we only get back the user processes. What's interesting is I find we've got a lot of programs that are connected that are not me, that are not the individual user. And so we want to combine this with a currently executing request to be able to get a little more information. I can see there I am in 139, but it's interesting to see the different services that are, are connected. So I'm going to combine SysDM exec requests and sessions because this is where it gets really powerful. I'm going to return reads, writes, logical reads, which are in-memory reads. The last wait type I want to filter on, is this a user process? And I see there's 139, there's ours. I can see my last wait stat, the CPU time associated with this. We're going to use this query and we're going to create a very long running process. So I'm going to copy these contents into another query window to execute them. 
And what I'm doing is I want to show you a first account of the data that I've got in my table. I've got 2 million rows of enrollment, 18,000 pretty close to courses, close to 1.8 million students, close to 1.2 million grades. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very long running query by returning essentially the whole database. I'm going to join all of these tables together and create a massive query that's a long running process so we can look at some of the information that we get back from our DMVs. So I'm going to run this long running query. And once I kick it off and execute it, what's going to happen is it's just going to run. Uh, th this is not going to finish uh, during this video or uh, any time during the day that I let it run. I wrote this on purpose this way. The first thing I want to do is I want to come up and run my DMV. When I run this DMV, I'll be able to find my query. Remember, it's query 149, and I can see here it is. I can see the last wait type, the reads, the logical reads. Now, because I've run this before, the logical reads, it's pulling data from in memory. Um, I can see the elapsed time, the total wait time. Even though we can't see the SQL text via the SQL handle or the plan handle, those items are there within the DMVs, which is very interesting. doesn't matter how much I refresh this, how much I wait. Um, this is just going to keep running. As a matter of fact, you'll see this wait time begin to aggregate. I, I took and I ran this for a while and then kind of fast forwarded for us. So I want to show you an interesting thing. This wasn't in the article, but SysDM trans locks. This allows us to be, see the locks that are occurring by the queries that are currently running. Now, there's a lot of information in here. And what we need to do is we need to filter this on the resource database ID, which is the database ID where we're running the transaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I'm going to run select star from sys databases. And there's my college DW, and I can see it's database ID 9. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to say, let's look at SysDM translocks with a resource database of nine, but I'm going to filter this to my session 149 that we know is executing so I can see what locks we are currently holding. Now, interestingly, there's a shared and SCH S. The shared lock is we're requesting to read data. The SCH S is a schema stability lock. It means we're connected to the database. You can't drop the table. You can't alter the table while we're running these uh, queries against it. Now, this is not a bad one. Typically, I'd be looking for exclusive locks for something that we would have to do our next step on, which is kill, because we only want to kill, kill a query if it's a long blocking process. But I want to warn you, because when we kill a query, it has to roll back. So we only want to do this in a last case scenario. Play around with this in dev. Um, I would prefer not to execute this in production, but it is in the documentation. So I wanted to make sure that we covered it. The way that you do it is you put kill and then you put the session ID for the query that it is that you want to kill. Once you have that in place, all we have to do is highlight it and run it. Um, and then what that's going to do is it's going to kill the other query. If we go look at our previously long running query, we can see we have an error. Um, it was unable to complete. So what did we cover? Well, we covered a lot today. We covered the different DMVs that we can use that are very similar to what we have in SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Manage Instance within a Fabric Data Warehouse. It's important to realize that your skill set as a DBA still matters to be able to research what is going on internally, especially with query performance. Really interesting and cool stuff. My hope is that we're going to get some more useful DMVs as the preview continues to go along before we go GA with Fabric. A big thing to remember is Microsoft Fabric is a preview service, so we're we're not done getting the great things that we're going to get with the data warehouse system yet. It, very exciting stuff. You know where we like to keep this going? Down in the comments. Uh, please sound off. Is there anything that you didn't understand? Anything that you wanted us to clarify? Maybe you wanted us to focus on a little bit more. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us today for Tales from the Field. Um, be good to one another out there and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.